Hey everybody, my name's Ryan, and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2015 Ford F-250. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs. So before we actually put our airbags on, what we like to do is kind of just a before and after. So how the truck sits and rides prior to the airbags. Once we have them on, we'll see how it does afterwards. So as you can see right now, with our salt spreader in the bed of the truck, it's relatively empty actually, and you can see it's still uh, making the truck squat in the back quite a bit. And that's really going to affect a few different things negatively. First one being your overall ride quality. Back here, we're not gonna have that suspension travel that we all want. So you're really gonna feel those bumps hard. And even when you're making uh, turns or cornering, you're gonna feel that weight back here uh, quite a bit. And not to mention all this additional weight that's gonna be in the bed of your truck, whether it's inside the bed or you're pulling a heavy trailer you're going to overload the suspension components and you could potentially make them fail prematurely. But that weight just doesn't affect the back of the truck. It also affects the front of the truck. So since the front is raised up a little bit, it's going to do a couple of things. Our tires aren't going to be making the proper contact to the pavement. So it's going to more or less kind of throw your alignment off, if you will. And so that's going to create uneven wear on your tires. Not to mention too, just the overall braking performance as well as the steering performance, it's also going to be affected. Since the truck's sitting up higher, we don't have that weight up here like we normally would if our truck was unloaded. So it's really going to affect that whenever you're going down the road. Now let's go ahead and run through our test course to see how our truck does without the airbags installed. Now, before we even get moving, Right away, as soon as I hopped in the seat, first thing I noticed is you can definitely tell that the truck is indeed kind of squatting in the back and raised in the front. I can really feel it. I'm kind of leaning like this. So it's not super comfortable. And as I said, you can definitely feel that weight back there. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take this for a spin. Kind of straighten out here. First thing we're gonna do is go over some bumps. So I like to kind of really get into them here, these first few, really get a feel for how the truck is doing. And honestly, there's really no other way to put it. You can feel that weight back there. Um, feels like the suspension travel isn't all that great. So it's kind of harsh as it comes down and just not as responsive as I would like it to be personally. Even at a very slow speed like this, I can feel how it's affecting our steering. Whenever we hit this bump, you kind of lose a moment of control in the steering wheel. So really not, uh, not that great. Really don't put your mind at ease uh, when you lose that control for a brief moment. So now that we ran through our bumps, let's go ahead, go through our slalom course and make some evasive maneuvers. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of speed here. When we get to this clearing, I'll make some more aggressive turns. And so if I turn it pretty good. I will say you can definitely feel that weight kind of throwing you around a little bit. The suspension just doesn't really feel that responsive. It, there's definitely a delay there and the amount of time it takes to kind of straighten you back out. So something that uh, wouldn't give me a ton of confidence if I did have to make a sweeping turn like this and definitely something that I would like to have corrected. So now that we have our airbags installed, right away you can see that the truck looks a lot better. You don't have nearly as much squatting in the back and so it should perform really well too. So let's go ahead, hop in run through the test course again and see how it actually does. So first thing I noticed just by hopping in the truck without even driving it yet is it already feels better. I feel like we're nice and level and we're not leaning all the way back here in the seat. So honestly, to me, uh, 
That's how I want it and prefer it. But with that being said, we're going to do the same test course again. Let me go in here and I'll kind of straighten out and get going over the bumps. And as we go over the first few, I will say you can still feel the bumps. And to be honest, it's not uh, a crazy improvement, I guess you can, can say that. It's... It does feel better though. You can't feel the weight in the back nearly as much. The ride's a little bit stiffer, but keep in mind too, you can adjust that air pressure uh, to your liking. I just kind of guessed what I thought we might need and went from there. But overall, it does feel better. Um, the suspension feels a lot more responsive. And now that I think about it too, I'm not having nearly as much movement and the steering wheel when we're going over the bump. So it's a little bit easier to main control. I didn't even really realize that until I kind of just looked down and thought about it. So definitely an improvement there. So now that we hit the bumps, let's run through our slalom course. And this is where I'm really curious to see if the bags are gonna help or not, because honestly, I feel like uh, the slalom almost had the worst results without the bags on. You could really feel that weight throwing you around. So we'll see what happens. Pick up a little bit of speed here, come into our clearing, and start making the maneuvers. And honestly, even after these first couple of turns, it is much better. I, I don't even feel the weight in the bed of the truck at all. It has not nearly as much body roll, and it feels, it feels great. Honestly, I feel like I can make these turns faster and more aggressive if I needed to. And to me, that's a good thing because I feel like this is the most real world type situation. Uh, you know, how often are you gonna be going over a ton of bumps, but you turn every time you drive. So uh, to me, this improvement is the best and one that I would definitely like to have if this were my truck. So now that we've been out on the test course and seen how our truck performs with and without the airbags, Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the bags themselves. So this is what they're gonna look like once you have them on your truck. And they're gonna fill that void in between the bottom of the frame rail and your rear axle. So they're really gonna give us a lot of support there. As compared to the factory style Johns bumper that was originally there, as you can see, this really wasn't doing a whole lot. Honestly, the only reason for these even being there is just to stop your suspension from completely bottoming out. So they don't offer us any support. And that's just not the case with the bags. The airbags are gonna be adjustable. And so you're gonna really be able to fine tune them. So if you have a light load or relatively light load, you may need say 10 pounds of air, something like that. If you have a heavier load, you're able to crank them up a little bit more. So maybe you put it at 20 or 30, drive around, see how they feel, and you could make your adjustments to really give you that sweet ride that you're looking for. Now there is something to consider with airbags, and that is the fact that they do require a little bit of maintenance. You know, you're always gonna have to maintain at least five PSI in the bags, and whether that's a big deal or not, it is something you're gonna have to keep in mind. So especially, and the winters where we got a lot of temperature fluctuation, you're gonna to have to kind of keep an eye on them. Now, one way to make it easier and combat that is by getting a compressor. The compressor allows you to uh, set a minimum air pressure in the bag. So if you hop in the truck, turn the key, it'll automatically kick it on and set it at that pressure you want. Or you can also make your adjustments like you normally would. Uh, with that compressor as well. There's a bunch of different ones to choose from. I'm a big fan of the wireless ones because they're super easy to use. Now, if you're looking to kind of stay away from that altogether, there is other options to enhance your suspension. One of the other ones is Sumo Springs. I'm actually a big fan of those. They pretty much fill the void like the airbag does in between our frame rail and our rear axle. But once you have them installed, you're not going to have to perform any maintenance to them. They're there and really that's about it. However, on the same note, they're not adjustable. So you kind of get what you get. And 
work with it. So there is a big question we get asked all the time in regards to airbags, and that's if they're gonna be able to work with uh, you know, your fifth wheel or gooseneck trailer hitches. And the answer is yes. They are gonna work with the majority of the hitches. And today is a perfect example of that. Our customer actually has a BMW gooseneck in his truck and the airbags worked out pretty well with it. There is uh, a couple things you're gonna, a couple small things you're gonna have to do to kind of work around uh, your hitch, but it's really not a big deal. No crazy modifications needed or anything like that. So at the end of the day, a great choice to have all that adjustability and make your truck ride that much better whenever you're carrying around your load. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's really not too complicated. However, at times it can be a little time consuming and tricky just to get to some of the hardware. But as long as you stay patient, shouldn't have any issues getting it done at home. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put them on together now. So to begin your install, what I did is used a pull jack to apply some pressure on the body of our truck. That way it's going to increase the amount of space in between our frame rail and our rear axle. It just makes it easier to work. If you're at home doing this and don't have a lift, what you can do is just jack your truck up by the frame rails. That way the rear axle will hang down and you'll accomplish the same thing. You'll have that extra room to work. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start on our driver's side. So now underneath the truck, just above our rear axle, first thing we're gonna to need to do is remove our factory Johns bumper. That's gonna be held in place with one 15 millimeter nut right there. Just remove this and set it off to the side as we won't be reinstalling it. So now what we need to do is secure our upper bracket these brackets are side specific, so make sure you have the appropriate side. You can look in the instructions and see the parts layout to identify that. But the way it's gonna work, this hole here in the top of the bracket is going to line up with that hole right there in our frame rail. That's a pre-existing uh, factory hole. And if we grab our bracket, the bottom of it, this oblong hole is going to line up with the hole in the bottom of our frame rail where our Johns bumper was, right there. So with that being said, we can loosely secure it. Whenever you do this, you wanna make sure you're not pinching any wires or anything like that. I'm gonna do the bottom first. What we're gonna do is take these two thick spacer blocks. And the purpose of those is to go in between the bottom of our bracket and our frame rail to fill that void. So we can push those in. Then we're gonna take this bolt here. It's got a hex head on it. That's gonna go through the bracket, through both of our spacer blocks, and that bolt's gonna go through that factory Johns bumper opening there. Push that up, and we can move to the inside of the frame and loosely secure the rest of the hardware. So when I was trying to hold our upper bracket up flat, I noticed that the top hole was not lining up with the hole in the frame, and that's, due to the fact that we have an aftermarket uh, gooseneck installed on this truck. And so the hardware that was holding the gooseneck on was interfering with that. So to give us a little extra space, I just swapped out uh, one of the large spacer blocks for a thinner one. And that solved that issue. The bracket still sits nice and flat and everything else. So the kit does come with quite a bit of these spacer blocks. So you you may need to adjust those accordingly depending on if your truck has an aftermarket hitch or, and so on. But with that being said, now that it's lining up the way it should, where our bolt's gonna go through in the bottom, 
we're going to put on the large flat washer. and a flange nut. I'm just gonna get everything just started hand tight. For now. now as far as the hardware goes that runs through this top corner bracket, what you're gonna do is take this 3 8 bolt, push it through the bracket, through the frame rail, now since we have that gooseneck, the side plates are on the outside of our frame rail and we don't have a ton of space in between that gap if it makes sense. So what I'm going to do to help kind of shorten the bolt up and draw it further back, that way it'll fit in between the side plate and the frame rail, I'm just going to use a few washers. Uh, these aren't included, but if you have uh, a gooseneck or fifth wheel, something like that, chances are pretty good. This is something you might have to do. So I'm gonna put those on, run them through. Push it through the frame rail, and then I'll be able to go to the other side and secure it. So in our case, I'm gonna have to run our washer and our nut through this opening here in between the side plate and our frame rail. Uh, I'm just gonna use a 3 8 flange nut and a 3 8 flat washer. And what I actually did is just taped them together to my wrench. And it's gonna be a little tricky, but it can be done. I'm just gonna line everything up there and then turn the bolt to get it started. So once you get the hardware in place and hand tight, we can come back and snug everything down. So once that hardware is snug, you want to make sure and come back with a torque wrench and tighten it all to the amount specified in the instructions. Now what we need to do is grab our airbag and this air fitting. This air fitting is going to thread into this portion of the bag here. So it simply just goes right in. I'm going to hand tight. Come back with a wrench and tighten it until the thread locker engages. And once it engages, from there, what I like to do is just kind of give it another turn, half a turn or so. You want to make sure it's snug, but not so tight. If you over tighten it, this brass can uh, crack and then the fitting will be no good. So my thought is you can always come back and tighten it down a little bit more if you need to. However, what I suggested, suggested is a good starting point. So now we can get our airbag in. How it's going to work is this portion of the bag here. It's going to go through that opening in our bracket. And one thing you want to make sure of, there's going to be this um, little dowel on top of the bag, this thing here. You want to make sure that that is going to line up and engage with this hole in the bracket here towards the front of our truck. So go ahead and put that through. Kind of rotate it. You'll kind of feel that pin, uh, dial pin click into place. And then up top, to hold the bag to the bracket, we're going to take uh, the star washer, slide that over, and this large hex nut. We're going to run this down hand tight. So once the airbag is in place, we can come back with a inch and an A socket and torque it down to the spec and the instructions. So now if you look on the bottom side of her bag, you're gonna see a threaded portion there. And what we're gonna do is you take the lower bracket, slide this into position, and on the bottom side of that bracket, we're gonna see a oblong hole there with a beveled edge. We're gonna take this Hex head bolt, 
and get this started. Now what we're able to do is take this bracket here and you can see the bottom of it is um, kind of curved. It has a radius to it. So this is gonna sit on top of our axle tube. So we're gonna sneak this in. And then the slots here on uh, this bracket are gonna line up with the slots on that very bottom bracket. So we'll kind of maneuver everything to get it into position. And once we have it in position, what we're gonna do is take a hex bolt and from the inside, we're gonna run it through both brackets and where it comes out, I'm just gonna take a flange nut and get it started hand tight. And I'll do that for our three remaining slots. So I have one more on this side right here and two more exactly like this on the other end of our brackets. At this point we can take this bail clamp and the way this is gonna work is you're gonna wrap it around your leaf spring pack and you're gonna wanna put it through the top hole in your bracket. So you, it's easiest to get uh, both sides lined up. And then once you have them through, again, we're just gonna take a flange nut on each end and get them going hand tight. So now what we need to do is torque down that hex head bolt that runs into the bottom of our airbag. Then we can move on. We can grab our axle strap here. It's gonna go around your axle tube and you're gonna take one of the carriage bolts and put these on each side of your bracket. Carriage bolt's gonna drop uh, down through. And again, come back with a flange nut and just get it going hand tight. So now what we wanna do is push this uh, bracket down as far as you can go without actually hitting the metal uh, stopper that's above the axle that runs through there. You can get it down nice and low and you want it to be parallel to the ground. So I'm just gonna kind of hold one of these bolts and I'm just gonna snug it up a little bit. That way there's some tension. And where I, whenever I have it uh, where I want it, I'll run the hardware down completely. Now we can do is tighten down our axle strap bolts. Now when you're doing these carriage bolts, you wanna make sure to alternate from side to side. That way it pulls everything up evenly. Let me come back to our big U-bolt that goes around the leaf spring pack and do the same thing that we did with the carriage bolts. You wanna run these down nice and even on each side. Now what we need to do is make sure we come back and torque down all of the hardware that we left snug. Again, you can find all those uh, specs in your instructions. So once you have the driver's side done, you're gonna repeat the same process over here on the passenger side. And really the main difference is just make sure that you install the included heat shield. So after your upper bracket is installed and you go to connect your airbag to that upper bracket, you wanna make sure that that heat shield is sandwiched in between there. 
That way it'll protect the bag from any excessive exhaust heat. So now that we have both of our bags installed, we can start hooking up the air to them. So first thing you're gonna do is mount up your no drill bracket. Um, this more or less just zip ties to your hitch. We're gonna put it over here on the driver's side. I like to leave it kind of loose for now until I have everything hooked up. But once you do uh, have it on there, we need to uh, connect our inflation valve. So I already did that one side. We're gonna do the other side. You're gonna take the valve, a flat washer, drop that through. On the other side of it, we're just gonna take another flat washer and that brass nut, I'll get it snug, and then I'll just come back uh, in with a couple of wrenches and just snug it up a little bit more. You don't need to get these super tight. Uh, you don't wanna break the plastic or anything like that. So I got that in there, grab my wrenches and tighten it up. Then what you can do is take the included airline, cut it in half. One side will run to the driver's side, other side will go to the passenger side. And we're gonna plug them into our inflation valves here. Now, when you plug these into any quick connect fitting, so not only these fittings, but the ones that go on the bag as well, you wanna make sure you have a nice, clean, straight uh, cut end here. So what you don't wanna do is use a regular pair of snips. Those typically kind of pinch it and leave a uh, crooked cut. What you'd like to do is use a tool like this, a tubing cutter, or even just a sharp utility knife. So after you make that cut, you wanna examine it, make sure it's good to go. And now that it is, this line, we're gonna run to the driver's side. So I'm gonna plug it into the driver's side valve. You just line these up, push them into place, and lightly pull back to make sure it is in there completely. Here's my side that I'm gonna to run to the passenger side. I already cut that one. I'll plug that in as well. Then I can kind of just get it how I want it to be positioned. And then I'll just tighten down our zip ties here. So I went ahead and routed my lines and this is a path that I took. If you have any uh, extra airline tubing, I do suggest just kind of coil it up like this. That way, if you ever need to make a repair or something like that, uh, you have more than enough. That being said though, here on the driver's side, I just ran it up kind of on the inside of our frame rail there. Where it comes out here you do want to do your best to avoid any hot moving parts so it's important to zip tie everything once you have it completely in and usually following uh, factory wiring is usually a pretty safe bet that being said i already cut my end nice and clean i will take it and plug it right into the airbag now the passenger side has been routed back to the bag this is a path that I took just kind of behind the back of our truck here along the frame rail it's essentially very similar to how I did the other side where it runs through now the only difference being the kit does come with um, some sheathing here that helps protect the airline from the exhaust heat so you want to put those on those just slide right over, and there's where I connected it into the bag. Now that we have everything hooked up, it's a good idea to fill the bags up full of air. That way we can check them for any leaks. So once you have your bags full, the way you can check for leaks is one, spraying all of the connection points and fittings down with soapy water. And if you have a large leak, a lot of times you'll be able to hear it actually physically leaking. I don't hear anything. And back here, I don't see anything. But what you would do is wait a couple of minutes, 
and all those attachment points, if you see bubbles rapidly forming, you know you have a leak there and you're gonna need to repair it. To repair it, you can simply pull the line out of your push connect fitting, recut the end nice and clean, put it back in, fill the system up full of air, and check it again. So not only do you wanna do the fittings in the back, you also want to come down and spray the bags down as well. So now that we've verified, we have no leaks and everything looks good, we're ready to load up and hit the road. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs on our 2015 Ford F-250.